And I feel like it just has like a weird look. I'm really excited to have my own speckled sweater. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting. Today is podcast episode number 24 where I'll be sharing with you all what I've been knitting for the past two weeks. I have two finished objects to share today as well as updates on my other projects and I do have a small acquisition to share at the end as well. I hope this video finds you in a cozy spot. If you are in America, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving week and weekend and let's dive into all of the knitting. I will first start with what I'm wearing. This is my Oversized Seasons Cardigan, a pattern by Ozetta. I knit this last year into earlier this year out of Lana Grossa Cool Merino, which is a chain style merino wool. It's in this nice gray color. I think the color name is light gray, um, but it's an all over fisherman's rib cardigan and it is really cozy. You can see the chain yarn pills a lot. You know, I haven't worn it that much and there's already a lot of pilling, but regardless, I still love this piece anyway. All right, so I'm really excited to share. I have two really big finished objects to go over with you guys. And the first is my finished Whitmore cardigan. So let me unveil it for you. And this was pretty finished last time I shared this on the podcast. The only thing I didn't have were the buttons. So I will show you that I've added the buttons. I just picked up some really basic white buttons from Joanne Fabrics. These are 12 millimeters in diameter. The pattern did call for 14 millimeter buttons, but Joanne just didn't have any. So I'm glad that the 12 millimeters fit. There's really nothing too fancy about these buttons. You can see they're just your basic white round buttons. And if this is your first time joining me, let me just go over a few basics of this pattern before I get into the details of it as a finished object. This is the Whitmore Cardigan Pattern by Amy Loudon. I knit this in Sorella Yarns Classic DK in the color Townhouse, which is from their Autumn in New York collection. I knit the size extra small and I used four and a half millimeter needles for the body and three and a half millimeter needles for most of the ribbing. The button band I think was done on three millimeter needles. It's like one size smaller than the other ribbing and I've been having quite a journey with this cardigan. I started this way earlier in the year in a bigger size. I think I cast it on size medium. I got to the sleeve split and tried it on after blocking it and it was just really too big. So I actually frogged it all, recast it on recently. I think last month or two months ago I recast it on at the smaller size and knit it all the way through. I did do a few mods to the pattern. So the pattern does not have any short row shaping. It's a circular yoke pattern. And I did add some short rows to the back right here. I mean, you can't really see them, but basically right after the lace pattern ended and before I split for sleeves, I added some short rows to add some length to the back, but not add any length to the front to help raise the back neck. I did do the short length version as well as the tapered sleeves. The pattern does give you the option to do a longer version and do a bishop sleeve, which is kind of similar to a balloon sleeve, but I opted for the tapered one. And another mod I made was adding a little bit longer ribbing at the bottom. I think in the pattern, the ribbing is maybe like starts here. So it's a lot shorter or shallower. And I just extended the ribbing out a little bit. Another mod I will mention, which wasn't an intentional mod, but someone did have a question about the buttons and the button side. So I am a left-handed knitter, so therefore button holes and button bands will get reversed for me if I don't change the pattern and if I knit the pattern exactly as it's written, which is why my buttons are on this side and my button holes are on this side, which I think is considered non-traditional or non-standard for women's clothing. I don't usually bother with switching around the button bands. I just knit them as they're written and then they ended up reverse for me. I think it's the same on this too. Yeah, so my buttonholes are here and my buttons are on this side. If I wanted to put in the energy to kind of reformulate the pattern so it's flipped, I could, but I really don't see an advantage to doing that. So that's why my buttons are on the other side. So yeah, let's talk about this cardigan. And I'm giving that sort of intro because I have some thoughts about it. It's not my favorite cardigan. It's not my favorite thing that I've knit recently. I think I'm kind of disappointed with the final fit of it. And I talked about this in the last episode a little bit, but I do have some 
like bubbling around where the lace portion ends and the sleeve and stockinette begins. You can kind of see where it pops out there. It kind of naturally folds here because that's how I blocked it and you can see the lace kind of contributes to that as well. And when I try on the cardigan, there is definitely a lot of fabric going on in the yoke and then it seems like it kind of shrinks in when the yoke is finished and where the stockinette is, it really shrinks in. And I feel like it just has like a weird look and I can't really put my finger on what is weird about it. There are a lot of possibilities as to why it is that way. Thank you guys for commenting on my last video. I love all of the really thoughtful insight from the knitting community on different problem points that could have gone wrong here in the sweater. A lot of you recommended maybe doing short rows after the sleeve split instead of before that could have contributed to the weird shaping because I do have some short rows that go into the sleeve which kind of affect that sleeve shape and my reason for doing them before the sleeve split was simply because when I researched how to add short rows to circular yoke patterns the free resources that I was able to find on the internet suggested all doing them before the sleeve split I've never actually done a pattern or I've never paid for a pattern that is a circular yoke that has short rows around the sleeve split I've only done patterns where the short rows are right at the neckline which I think in general causes a lot less issues or a lot fewer issues but I did not want to do short rows at the neck because it was going to interrupt the lace pattern and would probably be really complicated to figure out how to do it without interrupting the lace pattern so I just decided to do it after the lace portion was completed. So I think maybe if I had done another pattern similar to this construction, maybe I would have had more resources available to me to make a better decision as to where to put the short rows. So maybe if I had done them after the sleeve split, it would have been better. Another consideration is that my lace gauge might be a lot larger than my stockinette gauge. So when I gauge swatched for this pattern, the pattern did say to do a gauge swatch in stockinette. So I did a gauge swatch in stockinette and my stockinette does match the gauge of the pattern. So I know with lace, when you have yarn overs and eyelets, they really do open up the fabric a bit more. And in general, people have a larger gauge when knitting lace. To combat that, I could have knit the lace portion in a smaller needle size before increasing the needle size for the stockinette, and then maybe it would have been a little bit more balanced. I haven't actually sat down and measured the gauge of my lace. I feel like it's a little tricky to get like a good stitch count with lace because of all of the stuff going on, so I just haven't done that, but that could also explain the kind of like looseness on the top and the tightness on the bottom. And another thing that could be contributing to the odd fit is that maybe the circular yoke pattern just isn't really fit for my body type. I think with circular yokes, it is difficult to get exactly right and it's the type of construction where if it's not exactly right it looks a little off and I think yoke depth is a huge factor of that. I was looking up a bunch of circular yoke patterns on Instagram and Ravelry where you know I thought they looked good and I was trying to see like why does this look better in this photo or in this pattern than my cardigan does on me and I think the consistent thing that I was finding was that the yoke depth was a lot shorter like the sleeve split was very close to the underarm on pretty much every circular yoke both sweater and cardigan that I was sort of researching so when I put on this cardigan you'll see that my yoke depth is very deep I wouldn't say it comes down quite to my waistline but it does come down pretty far past where my actual underarm is now I know it's not supposed to be right up on your underarm but I think it is supposed to be shallower than this and I think that is just something that the pattern did I don't think there was many ways for me to adjust it unless I wanted to split for sleeves earlier and then figure out how to sort of reformulate the lace chart to go on just the sleeves and then continue on just the body it definitely would have been a very complex mod I don't think it's impossible I think I could have done it but I didn't know that I needed to do it at the time the pattern schematic does show that the yoke depth is 11 inches I think my yoke depth I measured on this one is about 12 inches so again and going back to my lace gauge being too big that made my yoke depth a little bit bigger than what the pattern said it would be even so if my yoke depth was 11 inches I think that's just too big for me I have mentioned before not too often but I am a very like short woman I'm very petite I'm only five foot zero inches tall or five foot zero inches short so I think it makes sense that something like yoke depth might be a little bit too big for me if I'm following standard sizing without any adjustments 
I do also think the sleeve decreases are very tight. They are very fast and that might have contributed to sort of the exaggerated look of the fit. I think if my sleeves were larger and looser, it might sort of make it look a little bit more even and more well fitting. So I do want to go back and redo the sleeves. I don't know when I'm going to have the energy to do that. I know it's not going to be anytime soon. So this is probably going to just sort of sit I don't know, I'm not gonna say time out because I kinda wanna wear it, like I spent all this time on it and it's finished, but I do wanna redo the sleeves and I don't feel super confident wearing it now, so I'm curious how much wear I'll get out of it, but I don't wanna completely abandon this project until I try redoing the sleeves to be wider and then seeing how it fits then. If it doesn't still fit then or doesn't look good then, I'm not really sure what I will do. The thought of frogging this all over again <laughs> makes me really sad, but at the same time, I would definitely wanna repurpose the yarn for something that I actually wear. I feel like I have too much of an emotional pull to sort of give this away to someone. <laughs> Even if it is someone I know who I know would wear it, I like. I want it for myself. <laughs> but all that aside, I don't want to say that this was a bad pattern. I think it's a very pretty pattern. I think it's a very nice pattern. I think I would have appreciated if short rows were written into it so I didn't have to figure that out myself and potentially cause issues with it. I think the yoke depth is something that is important to note when you're looking for a circular yoke pattern to see if it'll fit you because if I had known that this yoke depth was going to be too big and I knew I didn't want to put in the energy to modify the pattern, maybe I would have skipped out on knitting this pattern. I also just don't know if I love circular yoke patterns in general. I think I'll be more specific when looking at circular yoke patterns if I want to knit one in the future, but other pattern styles like raglans and drop shoulders have not <laughs> failed me yet. And that is my Whitmore cardigan for today. Until next time, if I redo the sleeves, I'll bring this back on the podcast and show you guys how it looks and what I think. So yeah, a little bit disappointing about the Whitmore cardigan. I feel like it's important to share when I'm not too pleased with how a project turns out because I feel like my videos are usually very positive and my Instagram is very positive. Not everything I knit is perfect. I <laughs> So I'm still learning a lot as I knit. I never want to say that I'm an expert at knitting at this point, even though I have done a lot of different projects, like I'm still learning so much. So this is just part of like the knitting journey and learning what works for me, what doesn't work for me and like my body type and what kind of clothes I like to wear and how I like to style them and knitting stuff and gauge. The gauge learning never ends. <laughs> if you think you've mastered gauge, you probably haven't because <laughs> I feel like it's just something that takes forever to get right. But moving on to the next finished object, this one is a lot more positive and that is my Lana vest. So I actually just casted this off the other day and you can see I've made a ton of progress on it because I didn't realize that Thanksgiving was this week and I told myself that I wanted to wear this at my family Thanksgiving dinner and it was last week and I looked at my Lana vest and I was like, I have a lot to knit on this vest. So I totally prioritized it. I was working on it all night after work. I do want to thank my one work day last week that I had a ton of Zoom meetings so I was able to really get some knitting done during those meetings on this vest. And yeah, so I think last time I shared this, I had the front panel and the back panel, but I hadn't done the ribbing neckline and the armholes, so I have since done that. I have obviously finished the body and done the bottom ribbing as well. So basics about this pattern, it's the Lana Vest by Irene Lynn. I am knitting the size one and I used five millimeter needles to get gauge. I am knitting this with originally lovely Lana in the color Merlot, which is an ND and Highland wool, 100% Highland wool, non-superwash. It's a really nice color called Merlot. And let's just take a moment and appreciate all the details of this vest. <laughs> Obviously the cables are gorgeous. You have a beautiful split hem at the bottom. There's also a really stunning horizontal braid that starts right before the ribbing at the bottom. The split hem continues off of this line of cables 
that has gone from the underarm all the way down and looks absolutely gorgeous. The two by two rib accents, I think really complement the cables and the pattern. Everything is surrounded by double moth stitch. You have a beautiful V neckline that has a really nice center decrease that just looks so neat and sort of spills right into the diamond pattern on the body. I also really love all of the increase lines on this vest. It just looks so intentional and really nice. All those details like along the underarm and along the v-neck i just can't get enough of this vest pattern it looks gorgeous it looks really professional it definitely took a while to knit like the cables really slow you down but worth the time and the effort so for details on the neckline i follow the pattern the pattern did specify a pickup rate and i actually had very good luck with it which doesn't often happen so pickup rate in the pattern was good. I followed the directions for the 2x2 two two ribbing. I did do just a regular bind off, which is not common for me. I cannot remember the last time that I've done a standard bind off in a knitting project, specifically a garment project, but I thought it just made sense. I thought it looked pretty good with the rest of the sweater and how there's sort of like a lot of like clean, crisp lines in the vest. And so I thought the clean, crisp line of the standard bind off would go nicely with the vest. I did bind off in pattern, so I did knit the knits and purl the purls for the 2x2 two two rib on all of the edges. Now I did do one mod on this, which was shorten the body, I think by one repeat of the motif. I wasn't exactly sure in the pattern how many repeats you were supposed to do for the full length of the body, but I just knit until I got to a length that I wanted, which was right at the waistline of my high-waisted jeans before starting the ribbing and I almost ran out of yarn too, which was funny because I wasn't planning on knitting this shorter simply to conserve yarn. I was just knitting it so it would fit me well, and this is all that I had left after binding off. I did do the ribbing to the specified pattern lengths. The back panel is a little bit longer than the front panel. It's a pretty decent chunk of ribbing, and with that, this is all I have left. I think it's like 11 grams of the yarn, so if I wanted to knit this to the pattern length, I wouldn't have even had enough yarn which is scary, but <laughs> I'm glad that I had enough. So I did have four balls of the Lana yarn and that is what this got me in the size one of the pattern. This is four balls of yarn. In general, with a lot of my knit, projects. I am trying to be more cognizant of how I style them and how I want to wear them and lately that has been with a lot of high-waisted pants that are more loose fitting. I did kind of follow the trend of ditching my skinny jeans that I've been wearing for years and now most of my jeans are high-waisted and more either straight leg or I have some wide leg trousers and in general those all look best on me when I have a cropped top to sort of define my waistline. I find that if I'm wearing sort of like a boxy sweater with those wider, looser pants, if I don't tuck something in at my waist, it's going to look very, you know, straight line and not really define my silhouette the way that I want it to. So I've been trying to be more cognizant with what I'm knitting and make things just a little bit more cropped so I don't have to tuck in like eight inches of fabric into my pants, which if I knit sweaters to pattern, they tend to be that much longer than I need them to be. That is why this one I feel like it looks short when I hold it up, but when I wear it, I think it looks pretty good with the pants that I want to style it with. This is a super oversized sweater. The cables certainly really opened up while blocking. In fact, I just washed this yesterday and I put it on my blocking boards to dry and it feels pretty dry. I was actually kind of nervous about taking it off to film today's podcast, but I did put it through the spin and drain cycle in my washing machine before laying it flat and that really got out like all the water. So I feel like it's pretty much dry right now, which is awesome. So I'll try it on for some B-roll clips so you can see how it fits. The width before blocking on this garment was about how much was it was 40 inches and now that it's blocked it's about 48 inches wide so an extreme amount of positive ease on me it definitely comes over my shoulders which is what I wanted and it's definitely that sort of oversized casual loose sweater vest that I am really looking forward to wearing. Now, the yarn that I used, originally Lovely Lana, it was sent to me to try, and I was thoroughly impressed the whole time while working on this project with the yarn. I feel like it just had a very comfortable, fun, tactile knitting experience. It is a Highland wool, so it's not like the 
softest wool ever it's not like a super wash and it's not like a merino but it is really smooth for a highland wool it has a lot of like airiness and you can see that it kind of sticks to itself a lot but I feel like it knit up super nicely like it's a two ply but I feel like the cable definition and stitch definition was still like pretty decent in this whole project I still can't get over the color their merlot is just really beautiful they do have a few other colors it is a limited color range but I feel like they hit all of like the main colors like they have a beige they have a darker brown they have an ivory if you're looking for pops of color like they have the merlot they have this really cool like royal purple and like a cinnamon color so I think even though the color range is limited you might be able to find something that you like. I was really pleased with my decision to go with the Merlot when I was originally selecting the color for this vest. I was considering the ivory which would probably match the pattern photos better but I was like let's go with something colorful and I am really happy with the end result. This fabric blocked really beautifully. It definitely is smooth to the touch. I don't think it'll be like itchy at all, but it just feels really like hard wearing. And because I knit this with five millimeter needles, the fabric is dense, but I feel like it still has kind of a decent amount of drape for what it is. Obviously it's not the most drapey, but it's an air and weight wool and it's gonna be thick. This is definitely gonna be really warm. I think if you knit a full sweater out of this, it would be really, really warm and really thick. So remember that in case you don't want a really, really thick sweater. I will share that I am now an affiliate with Originally Lovely. I really have enjoyed working with some of their yarns. And if you do want to try it, you can feel free to shop using my affiliate link, which I'll put in the description box below. If you use that link, some of your sale will go back to me. So if you choose to use it, I just want to say thank you in advance. And again, thank you Originally Lovely for sending me the yarn for this project. And now let's move on to my works in progress. I do have some updates to share and we'll first start with my Boho Blush Shawl by Andrea Mowry. So here is my progress on the shawl. It's definitely gotten some work over the past two weeks. Nothing super dramatic. I'm trying to remember last time I shared this with you. This is what I get for not using progress keepers. Well, I know I had done the first brioche and then I had done the lace, but I had not done the second brioche. So I've done at least from the brioche section here to the end, which is just a few rows, but it is really coming along. Basics, this is Andrea Mowry's Boho Blush Shawl. This is Sorella Yarns Classic Sock in the color red from the Taylor Swift Eras collection. Just this really nice kind of tonal variegated red color that I kind of want to wear during Christmas time because it's a very Christmassy red, but I can totally see myself wearing this shawl after Christmas is over. It's just a nice winter shawl or scarf to keep me warm. I am planning on leaving out the fringe that Andrea Mowry has in the pattern photo so I'm just gonna have the shawl fabric to sort of wear around my neck and drape around my neck with my winter coats and I think it'll be a really nice accessory to have for the winter. So yeah, as this is increasing with every row that goes on, it definitely is moving a lot slower. I actually just got to the end of my first skein of the sock yarn. It is a two ply sock yarn, 400 yards for one skein. So this is what 400 yards of the fingering weight yarn got me. I do have three skeins of yarn for the project, but I think I'm only gonna use two. I don't know, I just have a feeling that the project is gonna finish and I'll still have that third skein, which would be nice because I can see myself knitting a hat in the same color to make a really cool kind of corresponding knit set, but if I don't, then that's okay too. <laughs> so yeah, there's garter stitch, there is brioche. This was my first time doing brioche, which I really enjoyed. There is the lace, feather, and fan section. I did get to a second brioche section. I did mess up somewhere. I did. I was lucky with my first pass at brioche and this first stripe here. Didn't have any mistakes. The stitch count was correct at the end, but I did mess up somewhere here. Oh yes, here it is. And I did my best to fix it. I think I just did my best to not drop any stitches. And then this is what I ended up with. 
so you can see there's like a little hole there some looser stitches I really don't know what happened honestly in the moment I was not super in the mood to like teach myself how to fix brioche so I was like all right let me just get all the loops back on the needle so I don't drop anything and then move on so yeah I knew that was gonna happen <laughs> I feel like it was inevitable and there it was so we'll see if my third I think there's the third stripe of brioche in here if that goes better or worse than the second one because it's gonna have way more stitches than either of these two sections but yeah it's been really enjoyable to knit because it is mostly garter stitch and obviously when you get to the lace section or the brioche section those are also pretty entertaining also the fact that there are sections kind of motivates me to keep knitting and finish one section so I can start the next one. So it is really potato chippy and overall a really enjoyable shawl project. I mean, I wasn't expecting to get this much done in this short amount of time, which I think shows you how much I've enjoyed working on it. I do have another shawl project that I have been working on for a very long time that I've not touched in a while. And that one is just like the same stitch over and over again. And I've clearly gotten bored of it because I haven't touched it. So this is definitely more exciting and I'll definitely try to look for more patterns if I want to make another shawl, something that has like sections to keep me engaged. I am knitting this on three and a half millimeter needles, again with the fingering weight yarn, I think is making a really nice fabric. I'm really excited to block this too because I know that this garter stitch is really going to open up, the brioche is going to open up, and I think it's just going to really transform the size and the drape of this shawl. I think it's always exciting when a shawl blocks out to be way bigger than it was originally because it's like you didn't have to do any work and your fabric is way larger than it was. I'll give it a little try on to preview to see how it looks and yeah wow I like it. I feel like Taylor Swift. All right next update is on my Ollie sweater. This is a pattern by Marita Harvey. She's also known as Second Knit, and this is just your basic stockinette drop shoulder sweater. I really like this pattern because it has two by two ribbed accents, and it also has a cool kind of short row curved hem at the bottom that I'm looking forward to knitting, and it's just a really oversized boxy drop shoulder sweater. So I casted this on before the last podcast in this yarn combo here. And you can see my yarn balls are running thin and therefore very messy. <laughs> so the Surrey is a Surrey alpaca from Birch and Lily. This is actually just an undyed Surrey alpaca. And this wool is Woolberry Fiber Co's Rabbit Rump from the Caboose Collection. I think this is their berry sock base. So it's a two ply, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon and it's just this cream color with all these speckles. Again, I'm sorry the ball is so <laughs> messy that you can hardly see the yarn, but I think together these make a really nice fabric, and I posted a little reel about it just because I loved how it looked. I think the Surrey combo and this very subtly speckled yarn looks really good. It kind of looks like cookies and cream ice cream, which someone had commented on my reel, which I thought was really funny and I totally see it. So I feel like I call this my Oreo sweater in my mind. Like it just looks like Oreos. You can see that I <laughs> finished the back and then I picked up the stitches for the front panels and then connected in the not connected in the round, but connected the two front panels. And I'm still knitting flat because I haven't gotten long enough to connect in the round yet. But you can see this is going to be a really oversized drop shoulder sweater. In fact, I feel like the sleeves are going to be super fast to knit because this comes like all the way down to here. I'd say that's like my mid arm, my mid upper arm. And I really liked the shaping of the back it was made with german short rows and it makes a really nice slope and it's knit on four millimeter needles so it definitely is going slower than <laughs> what i'm used to knitting as of lately because i knit this on five millimeter needles the whitmore cardigan was on four and a half millimeter needles the zipper sweater was on five and a half millimeter needles so going down to four felt pretty <laughs> pretty tiny but I really love the fabric that it's creating and I'm looking forward to having kind of just this staple cream speckle sweater in my wardrobe. 
I feel like I've really loved seeing other podcasters who love speckles like True Lane and Marlene Knit and Airy Knit. All their podcasts, they have so much beautiful hand dyed yarn. I've always been in love with the speckles, so I'm really excited to have my own speckled sweater. I'll just do a close up of the fabric. So you can see one thing that not I'm disappointed by, but I think was just inevitable with this yarn holding it with the Surrey. So the speckles in here are kind of multicolored. Like you can see there is some like blue and orange in there, although it's mostly black or like a very dark blue or purple. But with the Surrey, it does kind of wash that all out. Like you can't really see any of the colored speckles, which is okay. <laughs> I think every once in a while, an orange one will like pop out like right there like oh some orange <laughs> but I hope I don't think in the future that it's like a stain because <laughs> it is few and far between when you get a colored speckle I don't know if I have much more to say about this sweater like it's just your basic drop shoulder stockinette yeah it's coming along I feel like this is my lower priority project right now I'm trying to finish some other things you know tried to get that vest off the needles and obviously wanted to finish the Whitmore cardigan get buttons on it so this will probably get more focus maybe after the holidays or maybe after Thanksgiving into December. We'll see. My next project is a new cast on and that is the Robin Beanie by Sari Nordland. I have been trying out a few different beanie patterns. I do have intentions to try out more beanie patterns this winter to sort of get a feel for what's good, what's not good, or <laughs> what's the best fitting hat on me. And the Robin beanie was one that I wanted to try. It's an all over two by two ribbed beanie and it is knit in a long tube form. So you get that really thick double folded cuff and I didn't realize until I started the pattern that this is a top-down knitting pattern. So you actually start at the crown with a circular cast on. There is a video link in the pattern description for, I think it goes to like a Knit Picks cast on tutorial, but I ended up using the pinhole cast on tutorial that's on the Isolde blog, Isolde Teague's blog that I have used before for the Musselboro hat and liked. And once you cast on in the small circumference, you start doing increases for the crown. And then once you finish the increases for the crown, it's all just two by two knitting until you get to the end. I'll be honest, this is one of those patterns that I purchased. I started knitting and then I was like, did I really just purchase this pattern? It is, it's very basic. What you see in the finished object, if you have knit a hat before, you probably can figure out the pattern without buying it. I'm not gonna share too many details about stitch counts because that would probably give away pretty much the whole pattern, but I did wanna share that the initial cast on stitch amount was, there were too many stitches for me to tighten the circle ring at the top like there were so many stitches that no matter how tightly i pulled on this it would not close there was like a, just a little bit of a gap that i didn't like so what i ended up doing was i casted on half that amount of stitches that the pattern calls for and then with that number of stitches i was able to tighten this enough to this point and then in my very first round I increased once in every stitch to get to the appropriate stitch count and then I started following the pattern so you basically just do like increases to make this shape and yeah once you finish those you just keep knitting till you run out of yarn I don't really know what the advantage of knitting this top down is. The only thing that I can think of is that Sari Nordland kind of advertises this pattern as a great way to use up leftover yarn. So maybe the concept is you cast on at the top and then you knit with your leftover yarn until you run out of yarn. And if you can fold it once, then you fold it once. If you have enough length where you can fold it twice, then you can fold it twice and then you have your beanie. I'm not using leftover yarn. I have three balls of this originally lovely Pira in the color Dusk, and my intention is to use at least two of the balls. I don't know if I'll use all three. I think that would be way too long because these are 50 gram balls of DK weight wool. It's 125 meters in this one ball. So 
maybe similar to like the weekend hat or the Oslo hat, I'll probably use like two and a quarter balls of this yarn. One thing I also don't like about top down besides the cast on being just like fiddly is that when you increase, I feel like it just makes your stitches kind of uneven, whereas decreases might not look this uneven. If you can kind of see my like ribbed line here, there's a lot of like places where these stitches are looser or tighter. And I think that's just the nature of the increases like that happens with raglan sweaters but in raglan sweaters it kind of looks intentional in fact you can see it right here on mine like that line with the gaps but it looks like it looks good because it's like built into the structure of the pattern but i feel like because you have these looser stitches in contrast with the rest of the ribbing lines that look very neat and tidy i think it just sticks out more and doesn't look as good than if i had done this bottom up and then just sort of decreased for the crown so yeah those are my thoughts so far on the pattern of course i'm not done with the hat but i can kind of tell already like what i think about the pattern and if i would knit it again in this exact way probably not probably just do bottom up <laughs> but i will say one positive thing about the hat is that i really like working with this yarn this was also sent to me by originally lovely and it's just a really nice DK weight yarn. It is a merino. It is super thick and plump. Like look at those stitches. This is knit on three millimeter needles. So it is kind of tight for a DK, but I think it makes a really nice tight looking rib. The stitches are really full and I really love the feeling of this fabric. I feel like it's hard to describe besides it being super smooth, super like lofty, like it has a lot of squish. And it also kind of has like a brushed feeling like I don't want to say it feels like cotton but it kind of feels like cotton I don't know if that makes any sense but it kind of has that like brush texture that you can get from like really nice kind of Pima cottons even though this is a hundred percent wool and it's non super wash which I really like because I feel like I've been having a difficult time finding a really good workhorse DK weight non super wash wool for sweaters so I would love to knit this in a sweater. Of course, I'm gonna finish this hat, see how it wears, but so far I'm really impressed with the knitting experience. Now I did pull out some Double Sunday to compare it to. I knit my Moby sweater out of this and Double Sunday was okay. I don't love Double Sunday. I feel like the spin on it is like kind of uneven. Like you can see right here with this loop that I just pulled out, you can kind of see the uneven twist and that kind of happens throughout like the ball of yarn. Like every once in a while, you'll get to a section that's kind of loose like this and I didn't like that. I also felt it kind of like staticky and it's just kind of like, I don't know, like it's very smooth, it's very plump and round, but I just didn't love knitting with it as much as I wanted to, especially being a big fan of Sunday, the fingering weight yarn, which I don't find has those like spin or twist issues. But compared to Double Sunday, you can see how much more even the twist is on Pura and how much tighter and rounder it is and how much more plump and I feel like they have the same amount of softness. If anything, the Pura might be more soft. So this would be a game changer if I can knit a sweater out of this. Now, I do have an affiliate link, the Originally Lovely, like I shared earlier, but I have to be completely honest, this is an expensive yarn. This is 50 grams and it's 16.50 US, which is very pricey. And to buy a sweater's quantity out of that would be quite the investment. I don't know if I'm quite ready to purchase that yet. Maybe one day I will, but until then, the hat will be good enough to try out the yarn. Next, I do have one small acquisition to share. So Sorella Yarn had their Autumn in New York collection pre-order that I just ordered a small amount of things from and it came in. So let me share what I received or what I ordered. <laughs> so I picked up one skein of the Classic DK in the color Nolita, which is this really nice kind of pinky, cream multicolor skein and i actually had gotten a skein of it from last year's autumn in new york collection this is last year's can tell by the label is a little bit different and i've been sitting on this single skein of dk weight yarn forever because i didn't know what to do with it i think when i bought it i had intentions to knit an oslo hat with it not realizing that the oslo hat in my size needs more than one skein of this 
and I just couldn't figure out a different pattern to make with the single skein. So I knew my options were gonna be more if I had two skeins, so I picked up another one and unsure what I'm gonna do with this, if I'll do an Oslo hat or if I'll do, I'm thinking this might be a cute scarf. Like I haven't knit the Sophie shawl yet and I'm thinking this could be a fun yarn to use for it. I don't know if I can get a decent size Sophie scarf out of two skeins of DK weight yarn. These are each 231 yards, so I don't know, have you guys knit a Sophie shawl with DK weight yarn? Let me know how big yours got, which is two skeins, or <laughs> give me some concept of if this is enough yarn or not enough yarn, I'm not sure. Happy to have these two, and I think it's really cool how they look pretty similar despite being dyed in completely different times. So I was kind of expecting the worst where they would look completely different, but I think they will go well together. And then I also picked up some stuff from the Sorella Market. So I got some wool wash and then I also got their hand cream to try. So the wool wash that I got is the Scent Brooklyn. This is, oh, I didn't bring the box that had the notes, but it's a very like light and clean scent. I think it's like sandalwood and leather. I wanted this because I feel like it's a bit of a gentler kind of softer scent. The other two wool washes that I own from Sorella are very fruity and bright and like intense. So I wanted something a little bit more delicate. Maybe if I want to wash or block some gift knits. Not everyone loves super fruity strong smells. So I thought this would be a good option as like a more giftable neutral scent that still smells pretty good. So I'm impressed with this one. It definitely smells nice. And I can definitely see myself using it. It kind of smells like a really fancy hand soap. That's what it reminds me of. And then the hand cream that I got is called Sweater Weather. And there's a bit of a backstory with this one. So in last year's Autumn in New York collection, I got the Sweater Weather wool wash and I fell in love with it. It smelled so good. I've been using it with a ton of my projects. You can see a decent amount of it has been used up the scent notes in this are like pumpkin spice, apple, and cedar. So it's supposed to be very autumnal and this one smells very strongly on the apple and the pumpkin spice. I feel like it smells like apple pie, which I really liked. So I wanted to get the hand cream in it because I really like the scent. And I was super disappointed when I opened this up to smell it when it first arrived because it doesn't smell anything like the wool wash. I don't know, I don't know what is the deal with this one, but it doesn't smell the same at all. Like if you asked me blindfolded if these two were the same scents, I would give you a very confident no because they don't smell the same at all. I think this one is very strong on the cedar note. It smells 100% like cedar and I'm getting zero apple and zero pumpkin spice. And I guess in itself, it's not bad of a scent. Like it's a very, it's kind of masculine. It's a very clean, you know, cedar scent, but it's not what I wanted. And that's disappointing. Now, I don't know if they like changed their formula since last year when they made it. Maybe it's the kind of thing where the scent on the wool wash applies differently to the hand cream, kind of like how dye applies differently to different yarn bases. I don't know, but kind of disappointing with the hand cream. I think the hand cream itself, like the quality of it seems kind of nice. I only used it once, but definitely a bummer. It wasn't what I was expecting. So yeah, that was the only acquisition that came in over the last two weeks. I do have some more yarn coming in in the next few weeks, so I think the next podcast might be acquisition heavy, but <laughs> I'm trying to stock up for winter projects and probably give myself kind of like a yarn buying pause in January, but <laughs> we'll see how much I stick to that. I did want to go back and talk about the giveaway winners for the books. Uh, last podcast, I announced the winner for the Knitovation book by Angia Wrangle, and that was the username MananC1888. If that is you, I have not heard from you yet, and I want to make sure you get your prize. So MananC, please send me an email here, and we will connect. I'll get your address, and we'll get that prize sent out to you as soon as we can. If you do not contact me before I film the next podcast, which will be in two weeks, I will be drawing a new winner, so please contact me. I want to make sure you get your book, and congrats for winning the giveaway. All right, so I have one last section to go over in this video, and that is a little announcement that my hat shop is open. So I was debating if I should include this in my YouTube video because I know that you guys are all knitters, and you guys probably don't really have a need for purchasing hand-knit hats. 
So if you have no interest, no worries at all, you can feel free to leave the video. This would be the end of the podcast, but I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't at least make a short little announcement about how my hat shop is open and then just quickly show you guys what I have. So a little backstory, because this kind of goes way back with knee knits. Prior to my YouTube time, I started knee knits as an Etsy shop. I really wanted to become big in the handmade market world and kind of like grow my business as a hat seller for handmade hats. I had some fun with it. It was open for a few years. I tried some markets and they were really fun. I don't have anything like super negative to say about my market experience or my Etsy experience. It's just I feel like the business wasn't giving me as much joy as I thought it would. And then I started knitting sweaters for myself and I started YouTubing and I found much more joy in that. So because of that, my hat shop has kind of dwindled out of my priority. And obviously my YouTube and sweater knitting has increased in priority. You might be wondering when I had the time to knit so many hats that I have a whole shop open. These were all knit way before I started YouTube. So I still have them available for sale. I'm selling them online only. I haven't signed up for any markets this year. So if you have any interest in purchasing a handmade hat, maybe as a gift that you don't have time to knit for this year, feel free to check out my Etsy shop that's linked below. I do have some beanies. These are 100% wool beanies that have the nice little panel at the top and all of my hats come with a little Knee Knits logo cork tag. Most of my hats are pom-pom hats, which I think are really fun for the winter. I have a couple different styles. They don't really have style names, but this one is just kind of like a textured round style hat and it has a bit of like a looser, larger fit on the head. I do also have a cable style hat. Also with a pom-pom, this one has a little bit more of a tighter fitting style on the head. I do also have some 100% wool pom-pom hats at a higher price point if you are interested in those. These are really soft roving wool that will definitely keep you really warm this winter. If you do get a pom-pom hat, I have a bunch of different pom-pom colors that you can choose from. All of these pom-poms are handmade by a maker based out of Arizona. Her name is Dear Edgar Designs on Instagram and they're all faux fur. They have little ties on the inside of the hat so they are removable if you choose to not wear a pom-pom or if you need to wash your hat. It's not recommended to wash the pom-poms. Some of them are 100% wool. A lot of them are an acrylic wool blend. I find that my customers liked the lower price point that came with the acrylic wool blend yarn. Also, these are machine washable if you need to, which makes them more kid-friendly. I do have a few hats that are sized for children, like these ones here. So yeah, that's kind of like a quick preview of what's in my Etsy shop. Again, not expecting you guys here watching me to purchase, but just in case you are, I just wanted to share. That does bring us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching and joining me. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.